hold on, hold on. Um, okay, open the ring. No, please. Sorry. I just, the back is really, is really, uh, yeah. it's really, um, precarious, so I don't want to, I don't want to lose it. Okay, go ahead. Let's see what this phone's doing. Is <laughs> it my honey? inside like a tingly vibration feeling like something was touching me. Ah, Dad! Yeah. She shouts out, Dad, can you come over here? Something just touched me. I did start to freak out when I could feel this thing touching me. You can't see it and you can feel it physically touching you. I did scream out requesting that Dad come check me with the Melmeter. I moved over to Anna's left side. Moved you have water to that? Down by her thigh yeah. area where yeah. the millimeter did register. Honey and not sure. was like, what are they finding? Upon juicy? reviewing the DVR yeah. footage, a small light anomaly appears out of the floor. It moves along the arm of the couch. It moves down her left outer thigh area, down her leg, and into the floor and disappears. I believe that that little ball of energy was Mary Roth, and I believe she was attempting to get Anna's attention. It targeted Anna. The attempt to contact the spirit to confirm that it is indeed Mary. Who's here with us? What's your name? We were asking who was in the room with us, who was making me feel the way I was, who was it that we saw by the piano. We start capturing the name Mary. Did you hear it? It was female and it, it states Mary very clearly. The activity in the investigation is escalating. Do you want to talk to us, Mary? The spirit, clearly agitated, now affects them physically in a very frightening way. We started feeling very heavy presence. We felt sick to our stomach, headaches, just physically you know feeling ill. Take us out of the house. Yeah, and I think oh, when a spirit water, makes you, know, like, you feel that way, it's threatening yeah. because something's not going to make you feel that way if it had good intentions. It felt like an attack with the history of the home. We're absolutely concerned. Because found the we, we needed to get out of the house. <laughs> Is there, are there other supplies in here, too? Pardon? Is this just like three other supplies? Water. Yes, I have uh, everything else is in here. What's happening inside the home? We were able to view the camera. Man, I wish I lied over there. I left the camera from the vehicle using the cellular phone. How far is the bottom one? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're a, you're a gentleman and a scholar. 
both Ann and I are observing and, and listening to the activity. We immediately started hearing giggling, sound like little kids chattering. You would hear the little footsteps. Like they're running around the house playing some sort of hide and seek with a the camera. They decide it's time to go back in the house. They have their next run in right away. We heard footsteps run across the upstairs floor. The footsteps sounded distinctly like a child running across the wood floor above us. We go upstairs to check it out, and then all of a sudden you can hear the footsteps downstairs. We got downstairs to see what was happening, and again, didn't find anything. Where are you? As soon as we'd get to the spot we heard it, it would start doing it somewhere else, like it was trying to mess with us or get inside our heads. Then they hear something terrifying. A scream. It sounded like somebody was upset. We both heard it clear as day, a woman shout. You couldn't tell what she was saying, but you heard someone scream at you. It reverberated off the walls within the house. It was disturbing. Alan and Ann. They decide it's time to go back in the house. They have their next run in right away. We heard footsteps run across the upstairs floor. The footsteps sounded distinctly like a child running across the wood floor above us. We go upstairs to check it out, and then all of a sudden you can hear the footsteps downstairs. We got downstairs to see what was happening, and again, didn't find anything. Where are you? As soon as we'd get to the spot we heard it, it would start doing it somewhere else, like it was trying to mess with us or get inside our heads. Then they hear something terrifying. A scream. It sounded like somebody was upset. We both heard it clear as day, a woman shout. You couldn't tell what she was saying, but you heard someone scream at you. It reverberated off the walls within the house. It was disturbing. Alan and Anna push their fear aside to follow the sound of the scream. It brings them to Mary's bedroom. Is there anyone here? Is there anything you'd like to tell us? We were up there doing an EVP session, hearing footsteps, hearing knocks and bangs on the wood. We captured the same female voice coming through, uh, identifying themselves as Mary. Okay. Where are you, Mary? Oh, shit. We don't like it. The voice is a female voice. It's an eerie voice. Oh. I really feel Mary Roth was coming through and trying to speak to us. It was frightening and incredible. I was extremely concerned. Anna, being a sensitive, she's more susceptible to being possessed oh. and uh, has encountered this in the past. So I was very, very concerned. We know that Mary can possess people. And with that knowledge, it intensifies the fear. Anna's anxiety is justified. At that moment, something terrifying 
comes over her. In Illinois, paranormal investigator Anna Tolf fears her worst nightmare is coming true. Ah, when a spirit tries to take over her body and soul. We know that Mary can possess people. And with that knowledge, it intensifies the fear. Being possessed is one of the most dangerous things you can encounter dealing with the paranormal. It would consume your mind, your body, your soul. You'd have no control over your thoughts, your feelings, your actions. The dangers are extreme. The spirit of Mary isn't the only one they have to fear. Something else is in the room with them. Adventurous spirit is really sort of encapsulated on a motorcycle. To embrace the adventure as it unfolds. You know, you're really feeling what you're traveling through. I love that about traveling on a bike. A male voice began coming through. Aggressive and unwelcoming responses. And we really felt like that was probably Mary's dad. It sounded like a father protecting his daughter, and I, I can absolutely relate to that. Very direct, very demanding, very stern, telling us to leave, get out. This activity could be a precursor to something much, much worse. You could tell we weren't welcome there any longer. And at this point, Ann and I made the decision that it was time that we ended the investigation. Well, their time at the Roth home was frightening. The opportunity to investigate and validate the claims was worth it. The Roth home is a very, very chilling location. This investigation was extremely active. There are a lot of indicators that there's more than one spirit in the home. So many people had tried communicating with Mary, trying to get her to come through, and we were capable of doing so, and I feel she knew who we were, and I felt she chose us to be the ones she communicated with. Mary is still in the home. She's lingering around for whatever reason. She's there, and she's made her presence known to us, and I feel she will make her presence known to others as well. Paranormal investigators face terrifying consequences when they unearth dangerous spirits deep underground. I witnessed images of people standing around me. Ninety miles north of Phoenix lies Prescott, Arizona, an old mining town with a notorious past. In the 19th century, opium use was rampant. When the police cracked down on the drug, the business went underground. A network of tunnels below Prescott became home to addicts, pimps, prostitutes, and violent criminals. Today, those brave enough to explore the tunnels cite bizarre and terrifying experiences. They had seen shadow figures <laughs> and people moving throughout these tunnels, and there would be nobody there. Different noises, talking coming from within the tunnels. There's some locals that refuse to go into the tunnels due to the claims. The stories capture the attention of paranormal investigator Jay Yates. Jay has 20 years experience in the field, some of it very personal. 
I grew up experiencing this type of phenomenon as far back as I can remember, which definitely helped keep my interest into the paranormal to look for answers. With the combination of like? my investigative skills as a law enforcement officer, it's the only I have, dude. it all kind of rounded no. me into who uh -huh. I am today. No. Together, he and his that. wife Marie formed the Crossing Over Paranormal Society. I got into this field to actually down, seek the truth. I still haven't okay. found all the truth, so I'm not going to stop, no. In 2015, Jay and Marie arrive in Prescott, eager to explore the tunnels. Oh, wow. We were quite interested to see if there was any paranormal legitimacy behind the claims of them being haunted, and it sounded as if it was promising due to the history. Underground, it is dark, eerie, and claustrophobic. A place like this can be prone to paranormal activity due to the energy that was pumped into those locations. I mean, there was a lot of negative, dark things that were happening within these dens and these tunnels. You definitely felt like you weren't alone while you were down there, even if it was just Marie and I standing there. Jay and Marie try to keep their bearings as they navigate the maze of corridors. It's kind of a dark and gloomy place. It's completely pitch black. Some of the walls are dirt. Wood falling off on the sides, and there's like broken up glass. The tunnels actually lead all throughout the town, but a lot of these sections were caving in. Everybody's like, Tiffany, you're a celebrity now. Why do you still use Groupon? Groupon makes me look good. My skin is like, what? There was also tunnels to the side of these dens that look like they led into other chambers. The air becomes dark and muggy. It's very dusty. It makes it difficult to breathe. <laughs> 